Well, why would they want to reduce the human population when that means less money for them? Most people have no idea. They're not after money. They have all the money they need. They're after power. That's their aphrodisiac. The overlords of the New World Order are now aggressively pushing for a worldwide one-child policy. The Chinese one-child policy was phased in gradually. In the 60s, when it began, you only had to pay a tax penalty. Only later did they imprison you if you had more than one child. Now the exact same proposals to penalize couples who have more than one child are being made in the United States, England, and Europe. In the push to reduce global warming, children, according to some, are the new culprits. A think tank in the UK says too many kids are what's making the planet worse, saying large families, anything over two children really, should be frowned upon as an environmental no-no, uh, akin to not reusing your plastic bags, driving one of those big gas-guzzling cars, uh, taking long trips overseas. The UK, in fact, has negative growth. I think Canada does too that still families in our rich countries shouldn't have more than two kids. In 1998, Ted Turner pledged to give more than one billion to the United Nations to be spent in the implementation of population reduction policies planet-wide. In 1999, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gave $2.2 billion to Planned Parenthood, the United Nations Population Fund, and other population reduction groups. By 2007, the Gates had given more than $30 billion, almost exclusively, to population control groups. The controlled corporate press cynically reported that the Gates were giving the money to help third world children. Bill and Melinda Gates were dethroned as the world's most generous philanthropists when their friend and fellow population reduction enthusiast, Warren Buffett, gave $37 billion to fund an army of population control groups. And I actually think the world will be much better when there's only 10 or 20 percent of us left. Dr. Eric Bianca. Prominent University of Texas biologist Dr. Eric Bianca while receiving an award from the Texas Academy of Science, said that the worldwide AIDS pandemic was, quote, no good, it's too slow, and went on to laud the virtues of Ebola because it would kill 90% of the world population quickly. When his statements erupted into a national controversy, his graduate students defended him, stating that Bianca was too conservative and that all humans should be killed. But most frightening was the fact that in a crowd of over 1,000 prominent scientists, local newspapers reported that 95% of those in attendance gave Bianca sustained standing ovations every time he extolled the virtues of mass culling microbes and man's destruction. China was able to turn the corner and become the leading world superpower because they have a police state and they are able to force people to stop reproducing. Dr. Eric R. Pianca. The eugenics movement has now shaken off much of its Nazi baggage and is using people's legitimate concern about the environment as a cloak to conceal their real agenda. Everyone wants to breathe clean air and have good water. But the controllers of the environmental movement have done nothing but co-op people's concerns and parlay it into support for global policies that further destabilize the third world and create untold misery. Phony environmental and conservation groups are now the biggest private landowners in the world. They lobby government to take property away from local populations only to develop it themselves later. When the U.S. military dumps millions of gallons of nerve gas on the east coast of the U.S., they don't say a word. Thousands of companies are creating transgenetic cross-species hybrids, splicing plants, animals, and insects, and releasing the new organisms into the global biosphere. 
vandalizing the very genetic code of the planet. And large environmental organizations do nothing. The corporate elite of the planet intensified their push for a global taxation system with a year-long buildup to the live Earth hysteria held on July 7, 2007 on seven continents. World leaders announced that saving the Earth was the new organizing principle for humanity and hailed it as the planet's new religion. They claimed that CO2, which plants breathe, was killing the Earth and that we must reduce the number of children we have to curtail our carbon footprint. Countries across the world marked the day by passing new carbon tax schemes and raising taxes on gasoline, natural gas, and electricity. It is a scientific fact that the sun is the main driver of planetary climate, and the measurements are clear. The sun is becoming hotter, brighter. It has been slowly increasing thermal output in the last hundred years, causing warming not just on Earth, but throughout the solar system. But the scientific facts and even the order of the planets didn't matter to one of the chief organizers of Live Earth, David Mayer de Rothschild, heir to the British arm of the Rothschild fortune, when we spoke to him. When I called Rothschild on the order of the planets, he just laughed, thinking the audience wouldn't get it. He continued to count on the population's ignorance and claimed that the global warming lobby has nothing to do with carbon taxes. I guess he hadn't spoken with his good personal friend, Al Gore. Global warming, the time for debate is over. But I think what you have to realize is that, that being environmentally sensitive and making money aren't mutually exclusive. There's a lot of money to be made in, 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 in addressing this issue. But you guys are gobbling up all the world's concern to just simply line your pockets and make kids read your book in schools and do all this. It's a business, just like you said, Rothschild. It's not. Do you think I make any money out of this? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Your great, great, great grand, your, your money changing ancestors did. They're in Germany, Red Shield, and I'm calling you out, Red Shield. We know it's a scam. A pollution-based tax system, principally CO2. We're causing it mainly, vast majority of it. The consequences are bad and will be catastrophic unless we act. Uh, the polar ice caps of Mars have, are receding at several miles a year, much faster than ours and that the moons of Saturn and Jupiter are melting. In fact, several of their moons were ice and are now liquid seas. Now, how are SUVs causing that, David Rothschild? That's because those planets are closer to the sun, my friend. <laughs> no, um, Jupiter yeah. and Saturn are not closer to the sun. Neither is Mars. Yes, sir. I think you'll find, right, that the very simple matter, and what I wanted to say, and this is my final point, forget your taxation theory, because actually it's not taxation. Put a price on the carbon. A tax is the best way. Cap and trade can also do it. If there were a carbon-based tax, mm -hmm. would there be a need for a, a, an economy-wide cap and trade system? They are not either or. We can do both. I am in favor of both. The architects of the New World Order are in a race to complete the structure of world government so they can suppress the independent development of technologies that threaten their monopoly of power, while at the same time steering new developments in the direction the architects chart for humanity. The technocrats call their governing system the final revolution because in the past, empires were enforced militarily. Now enforcement is primarily psychological and economic, and society itself is a construct of the elite who operate outside the controlled paradigm and control the civilization within, just as a child maintains the environment of a fish tank. We are like lab rats living out our entire existence, never questioning the confines of the cage or the scientists who experiment on us. New World Order engineers have hijacked human destiny his controllers have closely studied human behavior for more than a hundred years, 